holy crap do I love open source sometimes. This is Open Manus. This came out just a few days ago and has already gathered a amazing 20.7 thousand stars, forked 3.1k times, and it literally came out like Friday, March 7th, maybe even slightly before that on March 6th. And today is March 10th, 2025. This is getting astounding excitement around it. And what this is, is really they're trying to build an open source version of Manus. And if you're not familiar with what Manus is, this is a company that on March 6th, this AI agent that they claim like bridges minds and actions. It doesn't just think it delivers results. And honestly, some of the examples are pretty interesting. So let's take a look at like this one, for, for example. You can see here, what'll happen is over here on the right, and I'm sure this is playing at a faster speed than it normally would, but it's going over to the right, showing what's actually being loaded up, and then generating a bunch of files and data that you need as part of the prompt that you gave it. So really, really cool stuff here. One of the things that I really like about it, how it will generate final artifacts. In general, this seems to work incredibly well. There are actually some. I'll just I'll jump to the end of this. So you don't I don't, don't make you watch the entire demo. You can jump on and kind of do this yourself. But so if you skip to results, you can get down here and you can actually click this to load a dashboard that it generated. So this would be like the Tesla stock analysis. So we got two hundred eighty four dollars and sixty five cents. So that is probably generated, you know, some days ago. And we've got the financial performance, the CAGR, gross margin, market position, like pretty incredible SWOT analysis. This did a phenomenal job. Like if I could get something like this for every stock, you know, I would be in heaven if it was accurate. This is only available if you get an invitation code. I don't have. I did request one. And if I do get one, I will let you know and try it out. So that brings us to Open Manus. Open Manus is actually relatively easy to get set up. If you go down here, the method I ended up using was this UV method. And basically what you can do is you can set up like a Python environment, clone the repo, and then install the requirements. And then all you need to do is configure your config.toml file. I'm using Claude 3.5. I haven't tried with 3.7 yet. Um, and I haven't tried cranking the tokens up yet, which I probably should. So all the things that you need to play around with to configure this to get it running well, we're going to have to keep continuing iterating on. So for now, I'm using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. I switched this over. I put my key in and I kept all this the same. And I also filled out the vision one just in case that was useful. Then to run it, you can just run python main.py. So what does that actually look like? So here, I'm just going to go ahead and run this here. So python main.py. Here is where you enter a prompt. So the prompt that I'm going to use is I wanted to analyze the Tesla stock. I just kind of want to mimic what uh, Manus was doing. I have found I need to kind of tell it the day. I'm actually curious if this is going to work this time. But if I don't give it a day, it kind of just finds whatever it can on the internet and will give me like super outdated data. So let me see if this actually directs it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Hopefully we'll get a good output here. And I tell it to create me an HTML dashboard with SWOT analysis. Now, when I kick this off, it's just going to do 30 steps. So you can actually change this 30 steps to like 50 or 10 or 20. That's done in this file, I believe, which is the swe.py, where it's got the max steps defined as 30. Now, I haven't tested actually changing this, but I have debated, could I get it to like make a game in the browser, set this really high and let it run for a day and just see what happens? Because... The way it works is it like asked itself questions on how to improve it. So I'm very interested in that test. I think we got to get this to be a little bit more solid and then I could play around with that. So this is on step eight of 30. So while this is running, I mean, you can kind of see what's happening here and how it looks. But while this is running, let me show you some of the outputs that I got from some of the other ones. So I've ran five tests. I won't go into all the details here, but this is one where I actually attempted to have it generate a game for me. Now this was a top-down shooter game, and what was really cool about this was it it would do something like it'd get done with something, and it would say, "What are the next five things you want to do?" And it would be like, "Do you want to add an achievement system? Do you want to add multiplayer?" And one of the options that Man has selected was, "Cool, we'll do an achievement system," and it generated this game.js file. Unfortunately, though, which you'll see here, like spawn boss, 
this is a function that's called but not actually defined and that's quite often the case in here there's a lot of code that's just missing in here you know all the on key down events are missing so i can't actually run this uh, so we've got on key down you know being used but not actually defined and i haven't gone through all the files to check it but they ended up doing like a high scoring system. They ended up trying to generate music and sound. If this were to actually work, it would be pretty incredible because look what it looks like. I mean, while this isn't like beautiful, it almost looks like it's a fully functional game, but nothing will work because of all the missing functions. I'm deep down the model context protocol path right now. Uh, it's something that I'm, I have a pretty good understanding of now. I'm actually trying to build some of my own so I really understand it. And then I'm working on a video for this, hopefully to come out later this week on MCP. And so because that's hot top of mind, I wanted to actually see if it would generate like some cool documentation around it, maybe give me some examples of it. And while I think it's good, it's actually, I don't think it's accurate. I think it's confusing the model context protocol with model context providers. And this could simply be because of how new the model context protocol is in definition. So looking a lot of the code and stuff, it really is about like being able to share context in an application, not so much with like LLMs. You can even read that here in this what is MCP example here, which is a little bit unfortunate, but at the same time, like it's it wasn't terrible. So I think I would have need to tell it to do research first or direct it to some link or tell it like what a model context protocol is or go gather information on it. If I think it's just so close to, you know, MCP being model context provider that it just, it's not finding it super well. Let's go and check back on this. So we're on step 26 of 30. This is a perfect example. The dashboard now provides a comprehensive view of both current performance and future. Would you like me to, and it gives a list of options. And then you come down here, man is thoughts. Let's add a historical trend chart using a simple JavaScript charting library, chart.js, to visualize the price movements. So that was one of the options. See, the iterations are cool. It's like really, really cool. Now, what I am curious about is like, will the data be up to date? Let's go and see what's actually been generated so far. So really, we just have the dashboard. I guess I didn't tell it to generate other reports like I did on these other ones. All right. So here is our Tesla dashboard. It's not as fully feature rich as I would want it to be. And it still stops at March, 2024. I don't understand why that is. It is a little bit irritating because price is just nowhere near accurate because of that. All right, so what I want to do now is just compare side by side here. So in March of 2024, it looks like the price that it has listed is 262. And if I look over here, March of 2024, we're at like 160-ish. I almost feel like, you look at what the price is currently here, 262, 67. I feel like this date is wrong, but the price is potentially right. And so let me, let me try something else. But then you look at February of 2024 here, so if this is 2025, which it looks like the right price, then we should have saw a dip in February, but we actually didn't, which is bizarre. We look at 2024, we do see a bit of a dip in February here at 191-ish, 202. Yeah, so I actually do not know where these numbers are coming from or how it's analyzing it. It's a little bit unfortunate. I almost think there needs to be a specialized tool to pull like stock prices uh, because clearly whatever it's doing, like searching the web is probably not right. I could see that being a good like PR. Actually put in there, have a stock price tool where you can actually go and like, exactly grab what you need there. But anyway, I just wanted to give a quick early taste of like what OpenManus is doing. Call it to your attention. And I bet you now I am going to refresh this page and this number will have gone up. So let's take a look if I'm right about that. Yep, 20.9. In a matter of 15 minutes, 20.9 stars. So it went up another 200 stars in just 15 minutes. This thing is gaining a lot of traction. Keep an eye on it. Check the PRs. Like do a PR if you can come up with something. 
I'm actually really interested in the uh, stock tool of some kind. I don't know what API or like what we could use for that, but I'm super interested in that. Anyway, let me let me know your thoughts. If you have access to the real Manus, I would love to know how that's working for you. It's UI and everything looks super slick and solid, but at the same time, it is behind closed doors. You can't actually go and test it. So we don't know actually how good it is until we get our hands on it. And you have to believe that it's using Claude behind the scenes or some of these big frontier models. This, you can choose your model. You can test it in a bunch of different ways. You can configure it. You can change the source code. I'm really excited about it. I'm probably going to start using this uh, locally whenever I'm doing like a, a deep research in chat GPT just to do some comparisons to see how it improves over time. Because I did get some interesting results. I love the iterations that it takes. I want to be able to do a long iterative like game development step. I think that would be kind of cool. But cranking my tokens up a little bit. Uh, it is kind of pricey just to kind of show you, as you can see here, that I've done uh, 3.7 million tokens today. And this has primarily been with this particular tool with Open Manus. And I've done a total of 176,815 output tokens. So not an enormous amount, but it's still probably like, you know, 10, 12 bucks. I'd have to calculate it exactly. You know, maybe it's more like $13, but regardless, definitely worth it because I had a ton of fun playing around with this and I am super excited for what this team is doing. And I just want to say thank you so much for open sourcing this and just making a project like this come to fruition. I could see over the next six months, this becoming something that we all just have you know, on our system to be able to do these deep research tasks or actually be able to accomplish things. Let me know your thoughts below. And if you made it this far, if you don't mind hitting like and helping me with the algorithm of this video and hitting subscribe, I want to be able to make more of these and every little bit helps. Thank you all so much. Till next time, peace out.